chance for BYU tonight. Okay, I've got gallery view on my screen right now. Um, I'll probably keep it in gallery the whole time. Okay. Uh, right now, it's our, uh, my screen is already. Uh, right. I see you. Uh, who's the voice in BYU Athletics right now? It's Anna. Hi, Anna. I'll be silent. I'm just here to make sure everything goes okay. <laughs> That's fine. Where they could take a loss. So do I need to do anything in terms of controls on my end, in terms of maximizing nope. screens or anything, or no? Nope, Bobby and I will take care of it. What's up, Gav? Okay, uh, Anna, you're going to stay muted on BYU Athletics, is that right? Yes. Okay, uh, Gav will unmute himself when he needs to. Rubes, this video should finish at like 12.01. Okay. And we can just kind of start with that. Hello, Coach Burgess. So we have Coach Pope. Maxelius gets the Cougars the lead of two, 27 to 25. Fake up and good. Got to go and one for the only Giants. Taking ball from the outside, especially in this building. It is special. What's up, Trev? Wilson, three. Way outside. Not taking ball.
All right, uh, hello Cougar Nation. Welcome to Zoomin' with the Cougs, the BYU men's basketball edition. I am Greg Rubel, your voice of the Cougars, and joining us on today's Zoom call are head coach Mark Pope, assistant coach Chris Burgess, and players Gavin Baxter and Trevin Nell. Unseen, but very helpful, our director of basketball operations Bobby Hordusky and video coordinator Keegan Brown assisting in today's session. Thanks to all the fans who've joined us on the call. Uh, you'll not see yourselves on your screens, by the way. You'll only see the coaches and players and your moderator. That's me. At the bottom of your screen, though, very important, you will see a Q&A icon. Click on that icon, and you'll be able to text in your questions for the coaches and the players, and we'll answer some of those questions uh, during our session here this afternoon. Let's tip off our hoops call. With the head coach of the Cougars, he's coming off the most successful debut season in BYU basketball coaching history. His team went 24-8 and eight and beat the number two team in the country on its way to a solo second place finish in the WCC. He is Mark Pope. Hello, Coach Pope. And Coach Pope is on mute. Oh, dear. Started with a mute. There we go. Whoop. How's that? What now is going you. on, my friend? <laughs> So how, where are you and how are you? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm just out running a uh, quick uh, basketball-related errand. And uh, <laughs> I'm doing great, man. Just uh, excited about um, hopefully making some progress here until it's opening up and getting back to work. Well, I, it's even though you're only seeing a few of your guys right now on the screen, it's always good to see your boys, right? Yes, it is. And, you know, we're, we're actually together uh, – as a staff, every morning uh, on Zoom, we are wearing out Zoom. And uh, our guys have, have been trying to get together as much as they can uh, independently. And now we're allowed to jump on with them. So we're just trying to keep as connected as we can electronically. Now, j just so we get a good feel for things here, you may have to duck out at some point. Should we pre be prepared for a quick exit if you have to leave? Yep. Um, Yes, you should. Uh, the good news is that uh, I'm the least interesting part of this broadcast today. Uh, Coach Burgess and our guys are going to carry on uh, way, way more interesting than I am. Well, you, you let us know when you've got to go, and, and, he, and he may have just gone. For all I know, <laughs> he was with us, and now he's out. But uh, Coach Burgess, um, let's get to you real quick before we get to our players. Uh, nine weeks ago today, was the last complete day uh, of conference tournament action uh, before everything kind of shut down. Uh, how do you describe uh, the last two months? Well, you know, at first it was obviously disappointing for us and the rest of college basketball, both the fans and the, and the teams. Um, and then you kind of see how it's affecting the world and the states and realize um, – that it's bigger, it's bigger than, than, than we initially thought. And, but we've just been doing a lot of Zoom calls as a staff, Zoom calls with our players, a lot of virtual stuff, uh, recruiting. Um, we're trying to stay as busy and as innovative and as creative as we can um, to, to continue um, getting better every day. You know, that's kind of what we've been telling our players and telling our team and telling the fans is we want to get better every single day. So with all this stuff kind of going on, we got to find other ways to get better besides being on the court with our players, uh, being in the gym with our players, uh, being in the office in the film rooms together. So we found some fun ways to do that. You know, obviously with Gavin on, I've been, you know, talking to Gav every few days and doing some FaceTime calls with him and we're watching some, he's watching some film and we're putting together edits for him um, and, and just trying to get better that way. Um, if he can find a safe basketball gym, right. we put together, you know, he's got a little workout he's doing, um, that, that's incorporated to our offense and our defense. And he's trying to get better that way. And I know Trevin is as well. So we're doing things like that. And, and also we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed that we can be let, it, let back in the annex and we can start working with these guys because we're excited about this upcoming season. All right, let's, uh, let's uh, have Gavin unmute right now and uh, turn to junior to be Gavin Baxter for a second. Uh, 
Gavin got into seven games at the end of this past season. His best game was his last game, uh, five points, three rebounds, block shot in uh, 19 minutes of play against St. Mary's in the conference tournament. Uh, Gavin, how's it going? Good, good. Coach Chris Burgess, before we get uh, a, little, a little bit of Gavin in action, I want to hit Gavin for a quick second. Uh, and you've talked about it already, but uh, the motivation for getting back the way you did, even though it wasn't going to be for a, a complete season or even a half season, why was it important to you to get back? Yeah, it was just more of a, it was just a team thing. Just I wanted to play with the group of guys that we had. Um, the seniors were ridiculously talented and um, we had great leadership and just a great bond as a team. So it was something I was, I'd do anything to be a part of and I'm glad I did make it back to even if it was to play a couple games. Uh, quarantine beard. How long has that been going? Uh, man, this isn't even the full thing. I had to shave it before. Um, but this is, I don't know, this is going on probably two months. So hopefully I can keep it going. Coach Burgess, uh, how important yeah. was it to you and the guys to have Gav back even just for a few games? Really important. You know, Gav kind of approached us as he was rehabbing his soldier, cause shoulder, we, we were assuming he was going to redshirt the year. And he had seen what this team was doing, what it was capable of going, where it was capable of going. And, and he was working so hard in the offseason that he sacrificed this redshirt year to be a part of um, something special that was happening. And so when he had told us our initial thoughts was like, you're crazy, right? Like, let's just sit this out. But then as you watch him in practice and, you know, he's doing skill stuff with us down with the posts, we were like, this kid, you know, Gavin can really help us on both ends of the floor. Um, I mean, so he sacrificed that year to be a part of something special. Yes, it was cut short, but I don't think Gavin would take it back, right? He, he, he helped us tremendously in San Diego on the road with some big time defensive plays with his ability to switch one through five, his ability to rim protect um, and, and his ability to run the floor and grab rebounds. And each game was getting better and better. And there was no doubt, he, you know, St. Mary's, the last one of the conference tournament was his best game because he was just getting more comfortable getting the reps. Um, you know, and so it was just unfortunate that he didn't have a chance to continue that right in the first second and hopefully continue on throughout the tournament to getting better and better. But I think it's lit a little, lit a little bit of a fire under him to work this off season um, right now because he knows what he's capable of doing. Well, since you bring up the, uh, the San Diego game, uh, fans, draw your attention to the Bobby Hordusky window here. Let's just uh, run a quick six sevens of, of Gavin in action here. And Coach Burgess, it's quick, but yeah. it highlights pretty much uh, just the kind of impact Gav can make when he's on the floor for you. Yeah. yeah, if you run it back, sorry, Bob, but if you run it back, if you fans are watching, I know you guys are just seeing the block, but watch, I mean, Gav is guarding, he turns and face, so he's got to, he has to clear his hands. He can't put an arm bar on him. And he stays straight up. He chests up the defender, protecting his middle, and then still has the ability to block his shot. Like, that's called rim protection, right? Against a 6'10", pretty good center in, in the Dub CC. That's what we actually did not have that Gab brought to us um, late in the season. And he's going to bring to us these next two years. Like, that's, that's an incredible defensive play. Gav, how, how do you look back uh, on your sophomore season, even though it was abbreviated, in terms of what you're able to get done and even some foundations for the future? Yeah, I think it was um, just important uh, even to get out on the floor uh, this year, this past year, even if it was just like I said, for a few games, but um, it just uh, was able to kind of like Coach Burgess said, you know, light a fire uh, underneath me just to, just to work harder because um, only in a couple games I made you know, significant progress, I think. So I think that's a good indicator of what I can be capable of moving forward. And Coach Burgess, to you, uh, what do you see as Gavin's ceiling, if you will? It's a popular word. And, and, and what would you expect from him from sophomore to junior season, let's say? Uh, the biggest jump and Gavin's working on right now is his ability to play both the four position and the five position. And, you know, we know Gav can, you know, score on the block, rolls, uh, finish rolls at the rim, run the floor better than anyone probably in the Western United States. The biggest thing for him, and we're working on this right now, is his decision-making with the ball on the perimeter. Um, you know, he's watching a lot of Yoli, 
Dalton and Zach Selye's clips of just their decision making, making the backdoor pass, making the handoffs and slips, just making those reads. Because for us to be a top 20 team again, you know, Gav's going to have to play both the four position and the five position. And it makes us incredibly long and athletic in the, in the, in I, which I think is the best front court in the conference. Um, so his strides and his jumps is his ability to knock down open threes, his ability to make plays on the perimeter with decision making, his ability to run down the floor and get an early catch, his ability to set a screen and slip out of it, catch a roll pass and either dunk on guys or if he feels the help from the defense to spray that ball out, pass that ball out to the corner, the wide open corner, the man for an open shot. And if Gab does those things and rebounds at a high level, he's going to make the jump um, everyone – especially us, expect them to make. Okay, we have more than 100 fans with us right now on this Zoom call, and one of them, Greg Welch, uh, drops in a question. Uh, Chris, uh, Coach Burns, I'll have you and, and Gab both take a run at this. Maybe tongue-in-cheek, maybe not, this question from Greg, which is, uh, what will it take to get a Baxter, Harward, Lowell, Harms, and Lee lineup on the floor together next year? A 30-point margin. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big lineup. Yeah, can you dig it? That's, that's a big lineup. I, I mean, we'll be able to guard and rebound, uh, but I think offensively, we'll just throw it up there and we'll just go chase it off the glass. <laughs> yeah, we'll just be throwing it off the glass and trying to dunk it a bunch of times. But yeah, I'm pretty sure we could touch the each side of the floor if we stand it arm to arm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you guys, you guys are going to be bigger next year, obviously. Yeah, for sure. We're, we're going to be bigger. We're going to have a lot of different things that we can tinker with with our lineup. Um, that's why it's another reason we're itching to get back out there on the court to kind of start that process now. Um, but even with Wyatt's ability to shoot the ball and space the floor, Gavin's ability to be able to defend one through five, um, you know, Richard's and Matt's length, athleticism, and just pure, um, pure size and big rich. There are some lineups that I'm telling you, we're, we're going to have one of the best front courts, um, you know, BYU seen in a long time. It's just a matter of how we use these and how committed these guys are to defending with a bigger lineup because the way college basketball is, right, they really like to space the floor. So I know we can score. I know we can rebound. But can we def – can, you know, our bigger guys defend in positions like the three and the four spot? Or do we look at a zone-type defense, a one-three-one one or a traditional high school two-three and kind of give it a little bit of a Syracuse look with their length, right? And so that's what makes Gab really diverse is that he can play the middle guy, but he can also play the wing position on the zone defense because of his athleticism and his, and his makeup ability on the perimeter. So there will be some fun things. Do I think I'm going – we're going to have five guys like that lineup probably not but there's gonna be there's gonna be times we're gonna have three guys out there six ten and above with the seven something wingspan Gavin um how special was the the locker room this past season and and what will maybe help you guys attempt to recreate what you had with a new group when you're together as a team again yeah I think just uh it was the closest thing to family as you could get for a basketball team. I think um, we we're all just really tight, uh, really comfortable around each other. And I think one thing that made us really special was just not only our ability to, to bond with each other, but also just to be open with criticism. Um, not necessarily, you know, bagging guys, but just be like, you know, I think we could, you could work on this and, and guys took it really well. So I think just, ability to, to communicate with each other and making sure we have, <clears throat> you know, leadership um, that brings that, that attitude in to, into the locker room is going to be really important for us next year. All right. Thanks, Gab. The Trevin Nell now. Uh, Trevin played in 19 games this past season. Season included a thumb injury, uh, made seven threes on the year. as kind of a sign uh, of things to come. Uh, Trev, how's it going? What's up, Greg? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing all right. You hanging in there? <laughs> yeah, doing the best I can. Trying to stay in shape. <laughs> Coach Burgess, we saw the best of Trevin before the thumb injury, of course. Uh, had he not gotten hurt, uh, what do you think his season might have looked like? Well, Trevin's doing a good job coming in, you know, obviously playing behind an All-American and Jake Toulson. Um, and the one thing people knew about Trevor, Trevor every day in practice was competing against him. He guarded Tr Jake probably better than most people did throughout the season. So, you know, I was in Trev's spot, you know, a long time ago playing behind an All-American and Elton Brand, but you're going against a big-time player every single day, and Trev was competing and getting better, you know. And then, obviously, he come in 
and I can specifically remember the UNLV game. He came in, bangs a corner three, you know, gets – I think he took a charge, Trev, his first charge. Yes, definitely in the state of Utah. Um, <laughs> he took his first charge. He was doing some good things. And then just a freak little injury happens. Obviously, a shoot-around walkthrough. And, um, you know, it just it – just, it's just the way that it went. But we saw Trev doing exactly what he was doing, right, coming off the bench and thinking strictly defending – rebounding, keeping his guy off the glass. And, and then he'd be – I know Trev's going to be able to shoot open shots is what he does, right? And so, you know, that's the, the role he was going to have was exactly what he was doing up, that, up until the injury. Um, but people have to know about Trev. Like, he got the opportunity to play against a really good player in Jake, but a really smart player. And so Trev's, Trev's make, making a big jump just doing that every, every day that the fans and some of the people aren't seeing that what we see. You know, Trev obviously is working really hard. I tell him to stand up and take his shirt off. He weighs 200 pounds now. He's put on a ton of weight, just working on his body, right? And he's a year back from being on his mission, so his legs are under him. He's working really, really hard. His vertical jumps up. All those numbers are up. So, you know, we're, we're obviously really excited about Trev, just, just with a lot of things he does. And I even talked about the fact that he's, he's an elite shooter, and he's proved that at the high school level and the AAU level. Um, and so we know those things. So, yeah, I know that doesn't answer – answers more than your question, but we're really excited about him for this his sophomore year. One of Trevin's best games came uh, in Maui against uh, Virginia Tech. It was a game with multiple threes. And we have a clip, if we can cue up Bobby Hordusky, we have a clip showing uh, where Trev will continue to be really valuable for the program. Trev's on the opposite side. Good game for Trev. Great game for the Cougs, yeah. uh, Coach Burgess. Uh, Trevin, take us back to Maui for a second, if you don't mind, and, and just uh, how big a week that was, not just for you, but for the guys and, and, and the formation of this team this past year. Uh, Maui was huge. It kind of formulated a huge bond that we had. You talked to Gavin about, like, the locker room and how Coach Pope always says we had the best, like, locker room in America. And so the Maui tournament kind of solidified that because we were always hanging out. We were always – playing card games or in someone's room just talking or watching a movie. And so, like, our bond was there. And then to go out and play in front of all those fans that were there, it was something super special. And we competed with Kansas. We were right there with them. And we ended up taking third in this tournament. So it was something super special for us. And Coach Burgess, the shots Trev made against Virginia Tech when he made them was pretty big that, that, that night, as I recall. Yeah, it, it's just a testament, like Trevin was saying, about our locker room, right? There's so many people that will, you know, not get in the playing time they think they deserve or they'd like, and they're just not ready when they check into the game, right? We asked Trev in a, in a really critical time against an ACC team to come in, and, you know, Jake had played, I think, probably close to 70 minutes over the last two nights, and we needed, we needed Trev to come in and step up, and he comes out there and bangs a couple threes and gets some defensive stops. He's not worried about anything besides, you know, that's what you talk about a locker room. The key to having a special locker room is to get rid of your personal agenda, right? And so Trev's agenda was to come in there and help the team, right? And so that's what he did, and he was able to knock down some shots. And so, you know, Trev got better every single day, makes those shots. And, you know, a lot of people all over college basketball, if they're, they're unhappy their freshman year, they just hit, enter the transfer portal and just leave, right? And that's just not who our group of guys are. You know, they're locked in and they're all about the front of the jersey, which says BYU. And he's working hard to have a great sophomore season. He's not in the portal being like, oh, the, you know, I got, you know, I got treated unfair because of this. I got treated unfair because of that, right? And so that's a testament to our guys in the locker room and our senior leaders in Dalt, Zach, Yo, TJ, Jake, and Evan. So it's, it, it, and you know, it, we're, we're like, that's why I'm really excited about Trev. Uh, we're going to lose some big-time shooters and Jake, TJ. But, like, Trev's going to be right – he's going to be one of the elite shooters in college basketball next year, um, next three years. So, I got no, we got no issues there with are we going to drop off a little bit of three-point shooter? No, like, Trevin might be the best shooter that we have. So, we're excited about that. Okay, uh, Trevin, Coach Burgess called it uh, a bit of a freak injury. Uh, remind us all how it is you did get hurt. Um, well, it was about – three hours before our game against uh was this yeah it was San Diego and so I was super excited I we were doing shoot around I probably was shooting the best I've shot because I started feeling like I was a lot more comfortable I feel like the speed of the game was slowing down and I feel like I was starting to come back from my mission if that makes sense and um the ball I was looking for a pass from Jake and a manager I don't know what happened I guess didn't see and just fired a ball right at me, and it just hit perfectly. 
right on my thumb and just just shattered it. So I broke my thumb, but it was it was a blessing because it got it gave me a chance just to work more on my defense and just footwork. So Coach Short just every day we were up in the weight room lifting and just doing a ton of footwork for an hour hour and a half whatever time we had for practice, and so it was tough, but it's definitely got me to where I'm at today. So I'm excited about my sophomore year. And the recovery's been okay, obviously, right? Recovery's good. I can bend it. I can shoot it. <laughs> I can defend. So we're good. We're good to go. <laughs> so, so from the day they canceled the NCAA tournament to today, what have the last two months been like for you? Last two months has been a ton of lifting, a ton of footwork. And I've been shooting uh, with a couple of uh, just college players. And we've been doing a ton of three-point shooting from NBA so we can kind of extend our range and a ton of off-the-bounce off the, off the bounce stuff. So it's not just set shots, but trying to create your own shot. And so it's been a ton of ton of work, but it's been super helpful. And our team does a ton of stuff together. Every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we get together and we lift. And we kind of just make sure we have that family like atmosphere in that locker room. So it's been super good for all of us. Okay, again, to all of our fans who are with the Zoom call today, the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen does allow you to fire some questions in for the guys. Before we get to some X's and O's, let's get to another question. This one for Gavin. Uh, this is from Lincoln Hammaker. And the question is, uh, what do you expect this year from yourself? That's for Gavin Baxter. Um, I think just this year, uh, like Coach Bird just said, um, just really working on um, – kind of doing what, what the seniors did this last year is, you know, reading the role, um, slipping, uh, what to do when you catch the ball, you know, if you got, got guys on you, look to pass out, or if you don't, you know, look to make a quick move. Um, so I think just expanding my, my offensive game, but also um, definitely uh, um, working on defense and continuing to, to guard multiple positions. Um, I think that's going to help our team this year. Okay, uh, back to Coach Burgess and a little more X's and O's for a minute. Uh, there were a number of games this past season in which uh, BYU went from trailing in the closing seconds to leading in the closing seconds. And it seemed that uh, when the Cougs needed a big shot in a big moment, they often went with a play uh, that's called pitch wildcat. And it's not yeah. really just, just one play, right? It, it, it's, it's a package of possible plays, Coach. And we're going to watch – uh, pitch Wildcat in action in three games. We're going to see yeah. St. Mary's at home. We're going to see San Diego on the road. And then St. Mary's in Vegas. And they're all end of game or end of half situations. We'll watch it through once. Kind of yeah. get your commentary, Coach, and then see it again with a little more detail. Let's uh, check Bobby's window here. So you, this is the end of St. Mary's, down one. TJ gets the ball, right, gets it back. Jake now has it. Okay, he hands off and sets a – there's a double drag going right here. All right, TJ makes the read. We'll talk about this. TJ makes the read with the defender going under. Same play, but this time it's out of – coming from the full court instead of out of bounds. Jake sets that first one. Yoli rolls early. Lob dunk. End of the half, right? We'll talk about this. TJ is being guarded by the same player that he hit the game winner of. He's being overplayed now because that guy's like, I'm not going to – okay, so let's go back to the first one, Bob. So let's just talk about this. The, the play and the option was for G TJ is a three-man game. TJ, Jake, and Yo right now. Okay, pause it. So Jake's setting the first screen. Yoli's going to set the second screen. The read is for Jake to set the first screen and then pop. Now, as Yoli's setting the second screen, Jake's man has to make a decision. Does he tag or uh, basically slow up Yoli rolling, which leaves Jake open for a pass back? Or does Jake's man stay with Jake and allow the roll to happen? Well, it's all thrown out the window because TJ's man decides to go under the second screen and TJ's got Jimmer range and he just bangs this right read. It's the right read. The player went under. That's the right read. Okay. So now you get to the San Diego game. It's the same play. We're going to give it up. TJ's obviously going to get it back. Boom. Pause it. So now Jake's setting the first one again. Now the read It's the same read. How is Jake's man going to help? Okay, is he going to tag Yoli, which he clearly doesn't tag Yoli. That's why he's wide open. This time, Yoli's slipping early. 
right? He actually doesn't set the second screen. There's no tag on him because he slipped early. TJ makes a TJ Haas type beautiful pass. And then Yo just goes, I mean, it's beautiful basketball right there. Now, okay, hold it for a second. So now we know this is the same player, defensive player that guarded the game winner. His name, uh, Johnson, the last name's Johnson. So he's like, I know this play. I'm not letting TJ get the ball. I'm not letting him do it. And I'm going to deny him the pass. Go ahead. So once TJ gives it up, we run pitch wildcat. This guy, pause it. He knows he's going to get it back. So he's denying it. This is a read. If he's denying it, Jake takes two, one or two hard dribbles at Johnson. And then pause it. We clear out Alex Barcelo and Zach to open up that backside. Beautiful setup by Tej. Unbelievable pass between the defender. And TJ makes a big time finish. So it's a fun, it's a fun play. We like to run end of games with a ton of options. It helps when you have big time players in that play. Um, Wildcat potentially comes from the Kentucky Wildcat from Coach Pope's days, maybe. Um, pitch is just the pitch is just how we pitch the ball to back to TJ. That's where it comes from. Um, there's a number of things we can do of it. Those are just three end of games. We run it a ton. We we ran it in the Coach Pope era the last few years, and we've had a lot of success with it. Great breakdown. Thanks, uh, Coach Burgess. Good stuff. Um, roster for 2020-21 uh, uh, taking shape. Uh, the way I look at it, I, I think you've got uh, a couple open scholarship slots right now. Without getting into names, of course, yeah. you're obviously really involved with multiple guys in, in the transfer portal. And the portal lands you one of the best offseason pickups so far in, in Matt Harms. Can you describe that process, how it came about? Yeah, so Matt was a very unique kid. You know, he showed up on the portal. Um, Coach Robinson sent him a text, reached out. Um, he replied back. He was very structured. Um, he set up times to talk to over probably 30 or 40 teams. Um, you know, we had that opportunity to talk to him right away after the initial text. And you guys all know Coach Pope and his personality. And he just won Matt over in terms of getting a second conversation. And, and just they had a great connection. From there, you know, we really talked, um, you know, then I kind of got on the phone or, you know, Zoom meetings with him and we broke down his analytical stuff from, the, from, that, side of the, from that side of his game, his, his points per possession, his synergy stats, not just his, his points per game rebounds, like that stuff everybody knows about. And, and so we talked about his analytics. He's an analytical guy and was just drawn to that part of the player development. You know, we talked about how we can improve, you know, when he rolls on ball screens, uh, how he can improve in the pose, how he can improve with his shot. And it wasn't just, you know, we can't watch really film with him, but what we can do is we can talk about it from an analytical standpoint. And from there, you know, he, he narrowed it to three schools. And, you know, you obviously know when Kentucky and Texas Tech are involved, you know, it, it gets your it gets your kind of juices flowing a little bit, especially Coach Pope playing at Kentucky, uh, get your competitive juices flowing. And, and then I think the kid just really was taken to Coach Pope and his opportunity to um, – develop with us his last year and I think our message to him was listen when you're at the NBA combine or you're at draft camp you know coach Pope and I did it a long long time ago it doesn't matter if you played at Kentucky or Purdue or do it doesn't matter what matters is that you're the best possible player that you can be because once you put on that Knicks or that NBA combine or whatever it is people are coming at your throat and they don't care if you played at Davidson Weaver State, it doesn't matter. It's can you, how good of a player are you can be? And that message to Matt rung true, and he, he wanted to be a part of that. And it's also a testament to he wanted to play with our guys too. He saw what we did. He saw the way we spaced the floor. He saw the way we shoot the ball. He saw how unselfish we were. And he wanted to be – he saw the BYU fans. We were sending him, you know, you know the, 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 the mascot champion, national champion in Cosmo. And at the time, you know, our, our fans in the Fox Sports was, I think, Final Four. And he saw that. And he wanted to be a part of that. Um, so it was a – like Coach Pope talked, it was a full team effort to land him. Um, and, and we're so excited about it. He, he's going to make Trevin and Gav's life really easy. Uh, you could just because he's going to demand a double team at times and Trevin's going to be wide open. He's going to demand a double teams in the post. Guess what? Gav's slipping to the rim and getting easy. He's dumb. So there's going to be some fun stuff with Matt. And he's an elite shot blocker the way Gavin is. So we got unbelievable length and rim protection that I don't think we've had in a long time. We're going to, we're going to utilize it. Um, you're right. We have a couple of scholarship open. We're probably going to look at the transfer portal mostly. I think all the high school guys that we've recruited, we've landed. And, and we'd like to kind of get some older guys at this point. Um, and, and we're searching every day. I think at this point we've, we've narrowed down to a few guys and 
and we'll see what happens. Um, but we're excited. We're excited about the uh, potential prospects we're talking to. Okay, uh, to the Q&A window from the bottom of your screen, the Q&A icon there lets you text a question in. We'll have, uh, Tre let's have Trevin and Gavin handle these. We'll go Trev first and Gavin, and we'll, we'll have you take on two questions at once. And the first question came in, uh, what's your favorite memory from this past season? And the second question we'll have you hit from John Lyman is, how are the players staying in shape during quarantine? So uh, Trev first, then Gavin, favorite memory and how you're staying in shape. Favorite memory? Um, I would probably say, well, Italy was, a, was amazing. You can't really beat Italy and the things we did out there. But during the season, I would probably say um, beating Gonzaga and having everybody storm the court. I think that was just super special. And it's something that I've never seen on TV when I was little. I've never seen fans storm the court like that and then have all of us kind of talk. I think it was super special. And then after that, we all went to the locker room and, you know, we had our little water fight. And so... <laughs> <laughs> this it's just something super special with this team. So that's probably my favorite memory. And then and how are you staying in shape? We're staying in shape. Well, like I said, we're working out Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. So at 10 a.m. sharp, we hop on FaceTime. We FaceTime each other. And um, Coach Shork has given us some things we are able to do. And so we work out. Um, and then we do a lot of conditioning work. So we come back, the coaches don't kill us right away. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're, we're this definitely. This is all that. compliance. This compliant with the rules. This is all on their own. Us <laughs> coaches have nothing to do own. with it. This is all on their own. This is player driven. It is player driven. We have That's we awesome. have great yeah. leaders. We have great leaders with Alex Barcel. He he calls us every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and so he's going to be a a huge captain next year. And so that's that's where the players driven part is. Gavin. All right. Uh, favorite memory. Uh, I mean, that's kind of hard to hard to pick there because yeah, we tough. had Italy, <laughs> crazy Maui, all the great wins. Um, I got to say, personal favorite was was when TJ hit the game winner against Houston. Um, just something about that game was it was so intense and it came down to the wire and I was sitting there with my sling on the end of the bench and I was just like praying that DJ was going to make the shot and he did and we we're all jumping around we ran across the court and I think we were yelling in the mic with you and uh what's the Mark Durant <laughs> Mark Durant it was hilarious <laughs> but that, that was a great memory um and, and like Trev said just to stay in shape we hop on FaceTime and we uh, do workouts together so that keeps us connected and Outside of that, I have no doubt that our guys are doing extra work on top of that, so we're going to be prepared. Stick with Gavin, then we'll go back to Trev. Uh, this question from Max. How was the transition from high school ball to BYU for both of you, Gavin and Trev? Yeah, I'd say it's um, pretty pretty drastic. Uh, first of all, it's just the, the speed and the intensity of the game is, is you know, multiplied by 10. It's just a lot more intense guys are more physical, faster, stronger. Um, you got to play a lot better defense if you want to win games. And just the, I'd say the biggest thing is just the pace of the game and being able to get used to the physicality. It was, it was a bit of adjustment for me. Yeah, for me also, yeah, I've hit it right in the head. The speed of the game is definitely a lot different from high school and it's not just one hey, player. Fred. Can you hear me? All right, so like I said, uh, Gavin just hit it right on the head, and I feel like uh, the speed of the game is just multiplied by, by 10, and the physicality also changes. And like in high school, I feel like you can rely on yourself more, and in college, you have to rely on the team, and you have to trust the team and the coaches, and so that's where you have to have a good locker room to be able to be a great team. And so it's exactly what Gavin said. Okay, uh, Trevin from Kellen Knight, uh, who asks, uh, what are some things you do to create space to get your shot off? <laughs> well, right now I'm doing a lot of ball handling. Um, and the biggest thing is just change of speed and change of direction. And so you have to be able to read what the defender does. And then you have to be able to react in that moment. And so right now I'm doing a lot of reading. I'm watching a lot of film and like trying to read defenses and see where I can be able to get my shot off. And then to be able to come off a screen, you have to be able to kind of change your speed. So you got to start maybe a little slower 
and you got to just sprint. And so you have to be in the shape to be able to shoot the ball at a high level and like just going as hard as you can. So the biggest thing is just game shots at game speed. And that's what the coaches always reiterate every every day in practice. I, was, I, I got you. Don't worry. <laughs> but, yeah, game shots at game speed. That's the biggest difference. Okay. Kyler Kennedy asks, Gavin, what's it going to be like playing next to a seven foot three guy next year? Um, it'll be, I think it'll be an adjustment, but it's going to be, it's going to be great for us just because uh, he's going to, he's going to be a defender magnet. Guys are just going to be all over him and that's going to create space for other guys on the team. Um, dudes cutting to the basket or dudes facing the corner to get shots. So it's really going to be great for us. Um, you know, Matt being a skilled big, having a high basketball IQ, it's going to be, it's going to be great. It's going to open up the floor for us. Um, so it's going to be awesome for our team. Okay, question for Coach Burgess from Kellen Knight. And the question is, uh, Coach, do you have anything that you learned from Coach K during your time at Duke that you try to implement now as a coach? Yeah, um, Coach was one of the best. There's a reason he's in the Hall of Fame and done, has done what he has done. Um, my biggest takeaway from him was coaching through experience. Um, all my assistant coaches that – we're at Duke at the time. We're former players. Actually, Quinn Snyder was there, the jazz coach, and Johnny Dawkins, UCF's coach, and, and Dave Henderson. They are all on the 86, 87 team. And they coach through experience, the way they talk to you and communicate you and work with you, and both during games, off the court, on the court, in practice. You know, it's just they try to relate to you in a way that they were, you know, that, that what you're going through right now. So when, when Gab's sitting there and he's injured and I'm trying to talk to him about trying to get back in shape or what it takes, I was injured before, right? So I could talk to him about that. When Trev's, you know, struggling with his playing time or you got a big time player in front of him and how he has to stay ready, I can relate to him, right? So I try to coach through there. And the biggest thing for Coach K, my biggest takeaway was the day you walked into campus and onto that team, you're not bigger than him or his program. So we like to recruit guys, and our guys know this, that like Gavin Bax and Trevor Nell and Chris Burgess, they're not bigger than BYU basketball, right? And so there's no personal agendas about anything. It's about BYU, the front of the jersey. And when you get something like that and guys to believe that they're all about this team, special things happen, and it's such proof this past season where you got TJ Hawes, who's a, you know, I mean, um, Greg, you know, there's how many points he scored. You always oh, close to 2000. Jake's close to 1500, right? How did you, everyone's like, that's not going to work. Someone's going to be unhappy. No, it's not. Right. Cause they're not about Toulson. They're not about Haas. They're about BYU. And that's something coach Pope's as good as anybody I've ever been around. And that's something I've taken away from, from coach K um, where he's so good, you know? And so, I hope that answers the question, but coaching through experience and you're not bigger than him or his program. Okay, Dave Neely in the Q&A window asking, who's the best horse player <laughs> on the team? Uh, Coach Burgess, Gavin, Trev, you can each take a run at that. Last year's team or this coming year's team? Either one. I'm going to say, I'm probably going to say TJ. Yeah, I'm gonna say TJ. I, I'd say TJ. He's... He's too good. He's, he's just a hooper. He makes some weird shots. I would make something crazy that no one else in the world has ever made. Just, he, he gets you mentally, too. He gets you mentally. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'm saying TJ, too. So. <laughs> was, there, there was, was there a go-to for him? Was there a go-to horse shot for him? His half quarters. Yeah, he was way too good at half quarters. He shot. would shoot from the tunnel, so <laughs> it, it was over. <laughs> Okay, a uh, question from Thomas about shooting drills and an earlier question from Riley about footwork tips that you can work on at home, either shooting or footwork. If you're not in a team setting, what, 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 what do you guys find works? Trev, you know about footwork. <laughs> well, I did a ton of it during the season. Um, you just got to get cones out and you got to go full speed. So if you don't want to, like it can be a conditioning workout or you can just try to get better. And so right now I'm doing a ton of just cone work where you put, you know, four cones out. Maybe you start at the, the three-point line and you try to go to the free throw line. And you can have some person point at each cone. And so just you got to work on your reaction time. And you go up, touch the cone, come back, go up, touch the cone, come back. 
and then a lot of zigzags, um, a lot of jump roping. So you can get pretty creative with it. You can even get a, a speed ladder and you can just start doing a ton of different drills with it. But you can do a lot of just different things. You got to be creative to kind of get through this quarantine time. Yeah, what shooting drills have helped you most? Um, I'd say just working on touch around the basket. We do a lot of, um, I guess, Colby Lee would be a great example of just how good he is in, around the basket with his touch. So, I mean, believe it or not, we, we do shoot a lot of three-pointers and stuff like that, but it's also important to be taking tons and tons and tons of shots under and around the basket from all sorts of different types of angles, using the glass, not using the glass, off one foot, off – you know, Euro step, you know, fading a little. So just working on your touch around the basket is, I think it's something that goes overlooked a lot for, for basketball players. Okay. Matthew Kidd asks both Gavin and Trevin, uh, what are your majors? This is an easy one. Gav, we'll start with you. Uh, my major is global studies. It's in the geography uh, field or department. Um, and it just, uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if I can give you a super detailed rundown of it, but we'll just go with global study. So, <laughs> studying things um, with the environment, the climate, um, human geography, uh, human culture, just things like that. So it's pretty broad. Mine is well. I just declared a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> um, it's gonna be it's gonna be business management right now, and so I'm gonna try to get into the business school. So it's going to be, it's going to be fun. Okay. Question from uh, Dane Ibsen for Gavin. Gavin, if you get a wide open break, what kind of midair trickery can we expect? <laughs> Just stay uh, yeah, yeah, let's get it. <laughs> yeah, probably, uh, probably a windmill or a windmill 360. Okay. You better make it. You better make it. <laughs> and grow stars. Uh, I'll make it. We'll be <laughs> From Jackson, uh, maybe we'll throw this to all three of you, Coach Burgess and the two players. Um, it's pretty general, but what are the expectations for the 2021 season? And I'll tag on to that with maybe when last year started, maybe not everyone thought you'd end up where you did. How possible it be for this next group to kind of put itself in the same position maybe? What do you think, guys? I'll let you players go first. Um, I think just obviously last year we had a, a fantastic team and it was, it was a memorable season. But I think this year we can we can be better than that um, just with the different pieces that we have um, and our ability as a team to, to just bond with each other. And I think that's that's what's going to win games is, is our locker room. And I think we're going to be able to recreate that and, you know, I think, I think we're going to be a better team. I really do. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think we have a lot of guys that were able to watch like greatness and we were able to watch success happen. And to be able to experience that, especially for me, my first year, like I, I honestly believe we'll be better than we were last year. And I bet we'll, I guarantee we'll make it a huge run in this, this thing next season. Okay. Uh, our expectation is, is to win, um, just like we did last year. Our expectation is to be a top 25 team and to compete for a WCC uh, regular season and, and tournament uh, championship. And I know that's easy to say, but the expectation is for these guys every single day and starting you know, two months ago when the season ended is to get better every single day, right? It's to get better with their defensive footwork, to get better you know, owning their shot when they shoot shots, um, to get better at finishing at the rim. Um, and and to, we're going to hold – when practice starts, we're going to hold them accountable defensively like we did last year, and we're going to defend. You know, we're going to defend at a high level. And, you know, and, and, I'll, and I'll double down on just we're going to be one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. I, I just feel that way with our size, and we're not going to let these guys down. So our expectation is to compete with the best of them. We're going to schedule the best so that we can play against them and show people that. And, and I'm excited for these guys that have chips on their shoulders that, that are ready to prove people wrong. Um, just like last year's team was, regardless of how many seniors we lost this year. Quinton Moyer asking in our Q&A window, how did the team react to Zach Selyus's mustache last season? The team loved it. Loved it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was, loved it. Take one look at Zach and you're just hyped. So it was great. <laughs> 
it, it frustrated fans and got them going and it got our team and especially Zach going. It, it was, you know, it became this like, almost like a, a phenomenon. The shirts are being made and, you know, the, the rock fans that got t-shirts and it was just, it, that's what college basketball is about. Something special like that, that they can find, they can find with the team and, and they can just ride it out. And, and, and Zach's toughness and Zach's facial expressions and demeanor, you know, just amplified the whole mustache look. So I, I was a huge fan. I'm going to miss the mustache. I don't know if we have anyone who can grow it. If Gav shaved his beard, I don't know if that's what we want anyone looking at right now. <laughs> uh, I, I can't rock the look like Zach did, so we're just going to leave that, you know. We're going to retire the stash. Yeah. Up and it's, a big, it's a big mustache to follow. <laughs> All right, with this year's upcoming roster, this question from Brett Kearns in our Q&A icon. Um, with this year's roster, the one coming up, who wins a three-point contest and who wins a dunk contest? We need a three-point winner and a dunk winner from each of you. Coach Burgess. Ooh. Ooh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm actually there. I'm gonna go. Gav for dunks. I'm gonna go. Ooh, threes. Are you serious? The finals, coach? I think, would be Trevin and Alex. But I might. Come I'm on gonna now. try. Come on now, coach. The dunk will be easy. That is oh. not many people who can compete with Gav. Gav, what do you think? Three point and dunk. Uh, yeah. I mean. Three point contest. I, I'd have to give it to Trev. I time, yeah. sometimes I'll, I'll look over in practice and while we're doing shooting drills, and I'll just like kind of just be mesmerized by the ball going through the hoop so many times in a row. He'll hit like <laughs> nine or ten in a row, move to the next spot, do the same thing. It's just I'd give it to Trev for sure. That's confidence right there. Come on, <laughs> coach. Come on. Hey, AB was number three in the country. The- AB wasn't bad, though. Yeah, we can't, we can't shortchange AB on that one. Gab, you pick yourself in a dunk contest? I mean, I'm not going to toot my own horn, but no. Who, who would be number two, Gab? That's what I want to know. Who would be number two? Uh, that's, that's a good question. I mean, this last year it would have been yo, but this year I don't know. We'll have to see. Hey, Trevin, are you going to be a good guy and say A-B for three-pointer? I got to get my confidence back up, so I'm, I'm saying myself. <laughs> How about Doug? Gav? Yeah, Gav's definitely got it. Gav's got oh, yeah. it. Just watching him do his vert test was incredible. He was, he was making us all hype him up, but he, he jumps out of the gym. That's for sure. Okay, uh, Aaron Robinson, question for you guys. We'll wrap it up here in a bit. Um, do you guys have any pregame rituals you do before every game? <laughs> uh, pre-game ritual for last year we well like uh we like always got in a circle we always kind of said our prayer and then you know we always have somebody give a inspirational like speech before a game and and that's before we take the court um what do you think gav yeah i'd say that's about it as far as team goes i think you know, individually and with, you know, other teammates, we have our little dances or things that we do to get each other hyped. But um, I don't know if I can tell you any rituals specifically besides the team ones, just giving an inspirational thought, get each other hyped and get ready to take the court. Coach Burgess says, uh, you give us any pregame habit you have as a coach. I'll also throw a second question at you from William Hakes, who asks, uh, what you think is the most important thing to work on for younger players? Uh, pre-game as a coach is pretty simple, especially on the road. After shoot-around, I stay here. You know, we, we usually lift, as, us assistant coaches usually lift and just kind of kill some time. And then like, I know coach takes, coach takes a long nap in his office. Those, those are kind of the coaches, nothing really special. Uh, as far as the second question was uh, what to work on as a young player. Yeah, yeah. Um, two things, finishing at the rim, um, is, is a lost art. When we go and evaluate, you know, high school and, and AAU, and I'm going to tell you the difference between, you know, good and great players is the good players can make the moves. They can't finish. The great players can make their moves to get by their guy and they finish. I know that sounds really simple. It's just the truth, right? So you should, every single day there should, should be some sort of finishing package that you're taking 20 minutes on working on is whether it's a Euro step, whether it's, you know, floater, 
whether it's, you know, a hook shot coming down the lane. I think that's what made, you know, guys like TJ and Jake Tools and Elite was their ability to finish around the rim. And, and obviously Yoli. Finishing, right? They should be working on finishing every day. I know kids want to go out and just shoot a bunch of threes. I get that. But before you do that, right, finishes. And the second thing is, is like Trevin's already nailed it. You're, game shots, game speed. That doesn't mean just going fast. That means shooting the shots you're going to get in the game, right? Game shots, right? You should be working on the shots that you're going to get within the offense that you're going to use and shoot. Don't work on shots that the coach is going to be like, that's a bad shot. Don't waste your time with that, right? Game shots, game speed. What shots are you going to get in the offense? And, and what and, and doing it at a game speed because it doesn't make it doesn't do any good if you can go 50 percent of the speed and not get your shot off right so finishes and game shots game speed that's what you kids should be doing keep it simple don't get bored with the basics just don't get bored with them okay uh all the attention on on three pointers and dunks so a great question comes in from shelly branch who asks who's the best on the team at boxing out and posting up Ooh. Posting up, Big Richard. Nobody wants Big Rich on that block. They do not want his left shoulder. You just got uh, Boxing out, I don't know. I'll let you guys answer that. But pose, Rich, Richard, for me, is probably, you know, probably our best post player. What do you think, Gav? Who's the best at boxing out? Who's, who's dirty? Who's the dirtiest in boxing out? Uh... <laughs> I don't know. It tends to be <laughs> guards that, that get all dirty because they just they're so small down there they can't they can't use their bodies right. So maybe Alex. I, don't know. I was I, gonna I say a Alex. A couple of elbows from some guards. Okay. Gab doesn't box out. Gab just goes and gets it, so he doesn't I know. I don't box out. I just <laughs> jump up and get it. <laughs> uh, Max again. Max Welch. Uh, favorite NBA players from each of you. I'd have to say. Just Kevin Durant, probably. Um, him and Paul George are my favorite players. I don't know if I don't know if I've really followed anybody else as closely as them, but just Kevin Durant. Obviously, he's crazy to watch with how skilled he is. His touch is how smooth of a shooter he is. He's in the 50, 40, 90 club. Uh, just incredible to watch, especially at this size. And then Paul George is just ultra smooth, really skilled player. Uh, he never looks like he's in a rush. He never looks under pressure. Always makes the right play and just all around great player, especially on defense too. Kevin. I would say the person like I've watched the most and like done a ton of film about is uh, Clay Thompson. Just trying to kind of mimic my game after his because I feel like my game resembles his the most. And so, and he's unbelievable. He He's a 3D guy. He can shoot the ball extremely well, and he plays super hard. He has a lot of heart, and so that's probably my my go-to. I'm with Gav Durant. Kevin Durant is just he just makes you know he's six foot eleven and he just makes things so look so simple. His ability to obviously shoot the ball, score in so many different ways from the perimeter, in the post, at the free throw line, at the rim. Um, it's just his swagger about him. Um, where he comes on the court and he knows he's the best and he, and he, and he shows it. Um, but I just think it's – people don't understand how, how skilled he is at, like, 6'11", right? And, and, and it's, it's just it's, – it's pretty amazing to watch. And maybe our last question, we probably have to wrap it up here before the top of the hour. Um, and, and this came from Tyler Tucker. If you guys could play against any team in college, which would it be? Team you'd like to face? <laughs> Duke, I'll answer first. I'd like to go to Duke and play or get him on a neutral side, get him in the tournament, you know, get him at Vivint Center, get him in the Marriott. I know they're not coming to the Marriott. Um, but I'd like to play Duke. Yeah, Duke, North Carolina, one of those teams, just take them down. Yeah, I'm the same, just whoever's the best. Like, we want to be the best, so we got to beat the best. Exactly. Okay, guys, let's wrap it up with this. I'll, I'll, I'll throw it maybe to each of you in terms of uh, if, if, if there was one thing you could say uh, to Cougar Nation right now at this time with, uh, you know, some uncertainty and some hope and, and some, um, you know, prayers for the best we all have, what would you say to the fans of Cougar Hoops right now as we, uh, 
as we try and get through this all together and, and hope to see you all again together. Um, I would just say uh, there's, I think it's, we're going to be back sooner than we think. Um, and just to uh, stay positive um, and on just a individual note, uh, something, pick something that you can work on every day and just get 1% better at it. Um, uh, that's, that's been my mantra lately is just to get 1% better um, and just work on certain things, um, but not try to go overboard and conquer the world, but just, just 1% better every day. So that's my message. Big time, Gav. Yeah. yeah, just we got to stay positive throughout this. And um, my thing, my like the biggest thing that coaches have been telling us is we have to be working right now. And if we want to be the best, like we can't take any days off. We have to kind of get ahead of everybody else. And so Coach Popo always tells us this every Friday. He says, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse because you can't be staying the same every day. And so Gav really hit on the head. You have to just try to get that 1% better each and every day. Improve at something. Think about something you need to improve on and just work at it. And like we, Gavin and I are both testaments to this. If you work really hard, your hard work's going to pay off. And that's exactly what happened last year. We worked, I feel like we worked harder than anybody in the, in the country and it yeah. paid off for us. Right. And, and so that's what's going to help us throughout this time. So we just got to stay positive and stay optimistic. Yep, my message to fans is similar to what they're saying. Stay, stay positive, stay safe. Um, just know that, you know, this team right here is doing everything in their absolute power legally to continue to work hard, get better every day, stay in shape. Um, yeah, that, so that when we are cleared to, you know, work out and practice with each other, we're going to hit the ground ready and running. Um, and we're excited about this upcoming season. Um, you know, we, you know, we ask for prayers that, you know, everyone stays safe and, you know, that, that college sports can, you know, after college sports can resume um, and, and then we can get going and we can get you guys back in the, the Merritt Center and is, is the best fan base in America. Coach Burgess, uh, thank you uh, so much for the great contributions and the film breakdown today. Uh, Trev and Nell, Gavin Baxter, thanks to both of you. I look forward when we're all together again and we can do things like fist bumps again. And uh, thanks to Coach Pope as well uh, for joining us at the start of the call before he had to uh, jump off for some other uh, very important duties uh, this afternoon. So uh, to Trev, to Gavin, to Coach Burgess, and to all of our fans who joined us for this entire Zoom call over the last hour, Thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Hope you did too. Uh, we'll play basketball again. It'll be a glorious day. And until then, stay safe, be well, and go Cougs. See you later.